Hey everybody, welcome to part two of our Energy Academy breakdown of locational marginal price formation. In this part, we'll focus on how congestion impacts prices in ERCOT. Congestion is when a part of the transmission network is either overloaded or is at risk of becoming overloaded. Basically, it happens when there's more power being transferred between two areas than the transmission infrastructure can actually handle. To protect equipment, ERCOT monitors the power flowing across all elements in the transmission network. In ERCOT, congestion is the cause of price disparity between settlement points. When congestion occurs, ERCOT needs to take action. Usually, this means redispatching generation to reduce the amount of power flowing across the congested part of the network. If there's no congestion on the system, all locational marginal prices, or LMPs, will simply be the same as the system lambda, i.e. the cost of dispatching the next cheapest available generation across the system. However, when there is congestion, ERCOT factors it into every LMP across the system. And here's how. To begin, every congestion constraint has an import side and an export side. The constraint occurs because too much power is flowing from the export side to the import side. For any constraint, every generation or load resource in ERCOT has what is known as a shift factor. This shift factor represents how much impact that resource has on the constraint. For example, imagine a generator close to the export side of a constraint. It might have a shift factor of 0.5 or 50%. If it increases its output by 10 megawatts, the flow across the constraint would increase by 5 megawatts. Now, if it decreases its output by 10 megawatts, the flow across the constraint would decrease by 5 megawatts. Now, imagine a generator on the import side of the constraint. This generator might have a shift factor of negative 0.5. If it increases its output by 10 megawatts, the flow across the constraint would now decrease by 5 megawatts. When solving a constraint, ERCOT looks at how severe it is, how much generation will need to be redispatched, and how expensive it will be to redispatch that generation based on their offer curves. Using all of this information, ERCOT comes up with a shadow price for the constraint. This is simply the cost on a per megawatt basis of redispatching generation to resolve it. Once there's a shadow price for every constraint on the system, ERCOT can then determine LMPs. Imagine for a moment that there's just a single congestion constraint in all of ERCOT. If a resource has no impact on the flow across that constraint, which tends to happen if it's located far from the congestion, then its shift factor will actually just be zero. This means that its LMP will be the same as the system lambda for that operating interval. For the vast majority of resources across ERCOT, this tends to be the case for a given constraint. To illustrate actually calculating LMPs, let's start by saying that the system lambda is $200 per megawatt hour. This means that those resources with 0% shift factors will also have LMPs of $200 per megawatt hour. Now, let's go back to the generator that we introduced before, near the export side of the constraint. And remember that it has a shift factor of 0.5. Its LMP would be calculated by multiplying together the shadow price of the constraint, let's say this is $100 per megawatt, and the shift factor of the generator, and then subtracting that entire value from the system lambda. Therefore, at this settlement point, the price is lower than the system lambda, with a value of $150 per megawatt hour. Meanwhile, let's now think about our other generator that is nearer to the import side of the congestion, with its shift factor of negative 0.5. When we run through this same calculation, we find that its price is actually higher than the system lambda, with a vinyl value of $250 per megawatt hour. When there are multiple constraints at the same time, ERCOT determines the LMPs by repeating the same calculation across every constraint and for every settlement point. It then finds the sum of all of these values at every settlement point and then subtracts that value from the system lambda.
And there you have it. This is how Urquhart determines locational marginal prices. There's still one more factor that occasionally impacts price formation in ERCOT, something called price adders. However, we'll come back to these in a few episodes once we've introduced ERCOT's wholesale market operations. See you next time.